Hi, we're working in intermediate algebra. This is section 1.4, Relations. And if you're following along in your book, it starts on page 39. Okay, right on page 39, we have some exam examples of what relations look like as a set of ordered pairs, and this is the first one. Just a set of ordered pairs can be a relation. Um, the definition of what a relation is, basically any set of data that belongs or is grouped together for some reason. And that's exactly what this is. It's just a set of data points or ordered pairs that belong together. That's what a relation is. The domain of a relation refers to all the x values. The x values for that relation. The range of a relation refers to all the y values. All right, so for example, up above in the relation that I wrote up here, the domain would be the set of all the x values. So the domain of this relation is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. That's the domain of this relation. It's just the x values for the ordered pairs. The range, on the other hand, is the y values, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All right, for example one on page 40, we have this relation written out here as just a set of data points or ordered pairs. And we're being asked to identify the domain and range. The domain is the set of all x values. So the domain is going to be the set of x values. And you can identify the x values as the first coordinate in each of these ordered pairs. So that's the domain. Negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, 4, 3, 2. And that will be the domain. The range is the set of y values. And so, again, we can identify these as the y-coordinates for this set of ordered pairs. So the domain will be the set of 49, 36, 25, negative 16, not negative 9, and negative 4. All right, example two asks us to do the same thing with a new relation. So the domain is the set of x values. So again, just identifying the x coordinate for all of these ordered pairs. That will be 0, 1, 2, 4, 3, and the last one is 2, uh, but we already have a 2, so we don't need to list that one twice. You don't need to list them twice. 2 is still 2. The range is the set of y values. So we'll go through and identify all the y coordinates. And again, we will not list them twice if they appear twice. So that would be 4, 6, 5, negative 1, negative 9, negative 4. Um, a lot of times we really want to list these in numerical order so you can list them out and then make a new list in numerical order from lowest to highest would be negative 9, negative 4, negative 1, 4, 5, 6. It makes sense to make your list and so then we would not use this one. We would use this list 
a numerical value in numerical order. All right, example three, we have a new relation. And again, we're being asked to identify the domain and range. The domain is a set of all x values. So we will look for these x values, 0, 1, 2, 4, 2. And the 2 is listed twice. We will only put it once in our set for domain. So 0, 1, 2, 4. This is the domain. The range is the set of y values. So we will look for the y coordinates, 4, 6, 5, negative 1, 4. And again, you see the 4 is listed twice, but we will only use it once in our set here. And we will put them in numerical order. So that will be negative 1, 4, 5, 6. And that will be the domain and range for that relation. OK, for example 4, we're being asked to identify the domain and range from a graph. Um, this is on page 40 of your textbook. I'm trying to reproduce this graph as well as possible here. It looks something like this. And these tick marks are labeled by twos. All right, so uh, identifying the domain and range from a set of ordered pairs is not difficult. But from a graph, it can be a little bit more tricky. The domain, remember, is the set of all x values. And we read domain left to right. So you're going to read the x values for your graph here left to right. Okay, So all you do is look for the most left point of your graph and that would be here. This is the point that's the most left and what is the x value there is 3. So our domain starts at 3 and we're going to use interval notation for this. Our domain starts at 3. The brackets there mean that it actually hits the 3. It's not open at 3. It hits the 3. And where, how far left does this graph go? Well this arrow indicates this graph goes out all into infinity. So the left value would be infinity. This is the domain for this graph. If you read it left to right, the x values go from 3 to infinity and they hit everything in between there. This is a solid line and this interval notation means everything between 3 and infinity are x values for this graph. The range, on the other hand, is the y values. So you're going to be looking low to high, okay, vertically. So you want to look for the lowest point on your graph, which is here, but now we're looking at what is the y value here, and the y value here is 0. This matches up with 0 on the y-axis. So using interval notation again, this y value is 0. How high does a graph go? Because we're looking vertically for range. How high does this graph go? Where's the highest point? And again, that's here because this continues to go up. So this is going out into infinity or up into infinity. So the range is 0 to infinity. OK, example 5. There's a better graph on page 41. I'm trying to, I'm trying to reproduce it here. This is not too bad, actually. And again, we're going to talk about the domain and range of this graph. The domain is the x values. And we look at that left to right. So looking at this, where is the most left point of this graph? Well, this graph goes way out here all the way. It keeps going left, 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 left. This is not the most left point. This is just where it crosses the x-axis. This continues to go more left. This goes left out into infinity. So the domain here actually goes out into negative infinity because this direction is the negative x-axis. How far right does it go? Well, it also goes right out here into infinity. So this domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, or what we would call all real numbers. The range. 
Remember the range is vertical. We look low to high. So how low is this graph going to go? Well, both of these are going down low. And this is the negative y-axis. So this would start in negative infinity. Okay, and you might be trying to take a shortcut and decide that this is also going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. But if you're looking low to high, this graph doesn't go up into infinity. This graph, this is the highest point on this graph right here. And the y coordinate there is 2. So this graph goes from negative infinity to positive 2. All right, I already know that some people are going to ask me, well, why parentheses here and brackets here? Whenever you're using infinity, as a beginning or ending point, it always gets parentheses because it can't be closed. Infinity always gets parentheses. This 2 is getting brackets because this point actually hits the 2, and we call that closed. It hits the 2, so it gets brackets. Now, if there was an open circle there at the 2, we would use infinity. I'm sorry, parentheses. But since it actually hits the 2, it gets a brackets. All right, example 6 looks something like this. It's also on page 41. We're going to look for domain, which is the set of x values for domain left to right. So where is the most left point? Well, these indi indicate this goes out into infinity. So this domain is going to be negative infinity because that's a negative x-axis there. How far to the right? Well, this domain hits the 3 here at the right. Um, I forgot to put the tick marks on. If you're, not, if you're looking in your book, you can see these are labeled by 2s. This is 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. So that, uh, that graph is hitting the 3 there. Um, and it actually does hit the 3, so we're going to close it. The range is the y values. So again, for range, you look low to high. All right, how low does this graph go? Okay, this is not the low point, guys. This continues down lower, lower, lower over here. The low point is going to be way over here. And how low is it going to go? This is going low down into negative infinity. Parentheses with infinity. Where's the high point? Again, this is not the high point. This continues to go up, up, up. If there's a better graph in your book, if you look in your book, this continues to go up, 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 because this has an upward trend as well as a left trend. So this goes up into infinity. Now, uh, you might be wondering why this one's negative infinity, this one's positive infinity, when they are both look like they're both going the same direction. In actual fact, for x, they are the same direction. But for y, they are not. y is here. This one's going down, and this one's going up. So for range, which is the y coordinates, this one goes down into negative y's. This one goes up into positive y's. So negative infinity to positive infinity.